Today we're talking about learning Python efficiently. Not the endless tutorial cycle that keeps you stuck, but an actual strategy that works. Now look, tutorials are great, but we all know about tutorial hell. And even though that's a majority of what I provide on this channel, I don't want to see you get stuck there. Now first, let's quickly cover why Python is worth your time, and then we'll get into the strategy for learning it. Now first, it's versatile. From web development to AI, data science, or automation, Python works for a variety of tasks. Number two is that it consistently ranks in the top three programming languages for job demand. Number three, the salary is quite high. The average Python developer salary is around 100K in the United States. And number four is that it's perfect for both professional work and personal projects or hobbyists. Now, Python is great, but here's the problem. Most people learn Python watching video after video without making real progress. So I wanna break down how you can fix that. Now overall, my main advice is to spend 20% of your time consuming and 80% of your time actually writing code. That's it, that's the secret. It's simple, but it's not easy. Note that distinction there. Simple, but not easy. Now here's the exact process that I would follow if I was starting over to learn Python efficiently. Now step number one is to master the basics quickly. This should take you one to two weeks maximum. Now, especially in the world of AI, mastering the basics can be done pretty quickly. Now, I'm not talking about every single built-in function here, but just enough for you to be able to solve some basic problems. So pick one resource, yes, just one, to learn the basics. Variables, data types, loops, functions, basic object-oriented programming. That's it. Don't spend months here. Just get enough knowledge to start building something, and then the rest you're going to learn on the fly. Now, personally, I'd recommend that you pick either a short course that focuses on practical examples that can be from YouTube, like videos from my channel, or even a paid program, something like a Udemy course, or you look at something like Python's official documentation. Now, of course, everyone learns differently and there's so many options, but I find when you're just starting out that videos are super useful because you really do need things broken down more slowly and you can learn a lot when you're listening to someone who's experienced rather than reading through something like a book, for example where you might miss the emphasis or some of the important points. Now, while you learn the syntax, make sure that you're doing this by giving yourself mini challenges alongside the tutorials that you're following. Try to predict what code will do before you run it. Guess what the instructor is gonna do next. Code alongside and mess with the code. Try to break it. The more interactive, the more you're gonna learn. And this leads me to step number two, which is interactive learning. Now you need to spend a few weeks here learning and developing your skills in an interactive way. Most important point here. Again, 20% watching and 80% doing. In fact, research shows that when you just passively watch tutorials or read articles, you only retain about 20% of the information. But with active learning, when you're actually coding and building projects as you learn, you can retain 75 to 90% of what you study. And personally, I found that true for myself. Now, honestly, that's why I recommend DataCamp when you first start with Python, because the platform is super interactive and it lets you code right inside of their environment, getting instant feedback as you go. Now, DataCamp is sponsoring this video, and I'm excited to tell you about their two Python learning tracks because they're genuinely something I wish I had when I was getting started many years ago. Now, I've used DataCamp myself, and I've been recommending it for a while, many videos on this channel. And if you're just getting started, I'd highly recommend the Python Programming Fundamentals track, which is designed to teach you the basics from variables, functions, and all the way up to working with data, which is exactly what I said before. And if you're looking to push things to the next level and get job ready as a Python developer, they also have the Associate Python Developer track which dives deeper into real world skills like working with APIs, data structures, and debugging. Now, both tracks are hands-on, project-driven, and designed to actually help you practice, not just passively, but interactively learning. And right now, DataCamp is offering 25% off using my link in the description. So if you're serious about learning Python the right way, don't miss out. Now, once you've mastered the syntax and you have some confidence, the next step is to pick a niche. Honestly, this is where most people fail. They keep watching general Python videos instead of diving deeper into a specific area. Now you need to choose one area to focus on and I'm gonna give you a few examples here. So first could be web development with something like Django, Flask, or Fast API. Next, you could do game development with something like Pygame. 
Then you have data analysis with something like pandas or numpy. You could do machine learning with TensorFlow or PyTorch. You could work with AI agents using something like Langchain or Langgraph, or you could build automation scripts for your daily tasks. Lastly, you could even do hardware projects with something like Raspberry Pi. Then once you've picked a niche, you need to complete a project in that area. When you get stuck, look up solutions to specific problems, not just general Python tutorials. For example, if you're making a Django site and you can't figure out the authentication, search for that specific issue rather than watching a three hour Django tutorial video. This is honestly where you're going to learn the most and where I personally saw most of my success when I was getting into programming. You pick a niche, you get really excited about a specific project, something you actually want to work on, and then you learn all of the skills that you need to get that project to completion. So please pick a niche, pick a project you want to work on and actually finish it. Doing this forces you to learn so much more than simply following along with tutorials. And while those tutorials can help you, most of the learning happens when you're struggling, failing, and constantly having to look up solutions on your own. Now, personally, I actually started learning Python by working with Pygame, a 2D graphics library. And you can see many examples on this channel, especially many years ago when I was doing Pygame tutorials. But honestly, you can pick anything that interests you. The most important thing is just to make sure that you stick with it. Okay, so at this point, you've learned the syntax, you've practiced interactively, you've dove into a niche, and now it's time to become Pythonic. That's step number four. Now here's the time to level up and learn what makes Python code elegant and efficient. This is where you're going to transition from writing code that just works to writing code that's clean, efficient, and distinctly Python. Now let's talk about some specific Python features that separate beginners from intermediates that you're definitely going to want to learn, especially if you really want to get into Python. Now the first is list comprehensions. So instead of writing this, you can write this. It's not just shorter, it's actually faster and more memory efficient in many cases, and it's very popular in Python code. Next, we have generator expressions. When dealing with large data sets, this is crucial, and it can save you a lot of time and a lot of memory. Next, context managers. The with statement can handle resource cleanup automatically, and it's something important to understand. Then we have dictionary and set operations. These are extremely valuable to learn, and I find they're heavily underused in Python code considering what they can do. Next, we have decorators. These let you modify functions without changing their code, and they show up in a ton of Python frameworks. Then we have things like type ins. For larger projects, these are super important, and they can make your code a lot more maintainable. The key point here is that Python has a ton of unique features that the reasons people love or hate using the language. So spend some time, dive into these and learn about the more advanced and Pythonic features. I obviously didn't cover all of them in this video. I'm just giving you a few examples so you get an idea of what I mean. All right, so now let's move on to step number five, which is to keep building and keep shipping. Now, this is where most programmers plateau. They learn the basics, but they never develop the habit of finishing projects. Typically, the developers who progress the fastest are those who constantly ship and actually complete their work. Now, let me break down what I mean by shipping. This means using version control properly. Create a GitHub account if you don't already have one. Learn the basics of Git. Understand how to commit, push, pull, set up branches. Write meaningful commit messages. Structure your repositories professionally. And then go ahead and deploy your applications. For web apps, learn to use something like Heroku, Railway, or Render. For data projects, you can create shareable notebooks on Google Collab or something like Kaggle. For utilities, you can package them properly with setup tools. And for web services, you can learn Docker and containerize them. Honestly, there's all kinds of ways to deploy your applications. It's obviously hard to cover all of that in this video, but the point is you actually want to push this out into the wild and most importantly, finish the project. I know so many developers that have hundreds of half finished projects. Honestly, that happened to me a lot when I was starting out. You don't want to be one of those. And that's because the habit of finishing projects compounds over time. Each completed project builds your practical problem solving skills, increases your confidence, adds to your portfolio, and most importantly, teaches you how to work through the boring parts of coding, which is what most developers do every single day. Now, one professional looking, fully completed project is worth a lot more than a dozen half finished tutorials. And the best developers that I know all share this trait. They finish what they start. Now, remember, your goal here isn't to be good at Python tutorials. It's to be good at building things with Python. That's the point of coding. Now, here are my final thoughts for this video. 
If you're six months into learning Python and you haven't built anything substantial yet, then you're doing it wrong. The pattern is simple. Learn a little bit, build something, get stuck, learn what you need to learn to fix that and repeat. That's how the real skills are built. Now, if you found this helpful, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. I want to hear what you guys are building, how you're learning Python, and maybe anything that you're struggling with, and I might make another video for you. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.